Hi guys and welcome to the next video. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, creating a program. Uh, I'm going to split that video into two parts because there is a little bit of stuff that I want to cover. So today we're going to fo focus mainly on how to create a program, what are the program properties, and uh, creating a point and create a few points and what the program should have uh, at the start. And then in the next part I'm going to talk a little bit about the options uh, that you have in a program, what you can add to it, and so on and so on. Uh, in order to do the program, uh, you need to see the other videos though, the one how to make a user frame and tool frame, how to do the mastering, and uh, how to create a payload, because we need that information in order to create a program. And you need to know how to use it so you can actually create the program, jog the robot to the correct positions and so on and so on. So guys, again, go there, take it out and we can jump right into creating the program. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the exercises and I'll explain everything to you back there. Oh, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and right now we are ready to go. Okay guys, so welcome to the exercises. So we're going to create your first program today and I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what type of program we can create. But we're going to focus just on the main program for now. The next one I will talk a little bit more in the next video. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, first of all, you wanna hit select and that's where all of your programs are. Now, as you can see, there is a function menu in here. When you hit next, there is a little bit more information. So we'll talk about that now because you need to know what's going on before you create the program. So the first one is a type menu. And in here you can choose the program type that you want to uh, look at. So as you can see, we have uh, all programs. You can select collections. You can select teach pendant programs, you can select chiral programs, macros, and condition hand handlers. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about all of those in the next videos. Today, we're going to focus on the teach pendant programs, and that's your main program. Those In those type of programs, you're going to put all of your movements, all of your logic, you're going to call sub programs, and so on. So we'll start with that one, and that's the most common used program. All right, uh, I said we're going to talk a little bit more about the menus. So the uh, delete one, uh, you're going, you can delete the programs with that. So when you, whenever you hit delete, just in case you make a mistake, you still can say no or yes. When you hit yes, you will delete the program that was highlighted by the bar. Uh, the next one is monitor. We cannot use it right now because uh, we are not running any program that's used when you are running a program. Uh, attributes. So attributes are the thing that you can see in here and you can change it. So you can change it to the comment. So it will show the program comment. Uh, you can uh, select protection type. Either it's uh, right uh, protected. That means you cannot change anything in, in the uh, file unless you turn off the protection. Last modified, that's very nice, that's very important. So that's showing when the file was last uh, opened in uh, editor. So you can take a look if someone changed something and if he did, when that happened. Really nice option, guys. Remember that one. Uh, next one is size. So you can take a look at the size of the file. Uh, copy source. So if the program was copied from uh, another program, <clears throat> then you can take a look where it was copied from. So for, for example, it looks like the maintenance position was copied from a home program. Next one is the name only. So that will show you just the programs. Uh, the one I recommend mostly is probably comment because uh, you have a program name and then you have a comment that you can take a look at and get a little bit more information. Okay, uh, in the next menu, there are a few uh, pretty nice uh, buttons that you want to know. <clears throat> First of them is copy. So that's what I said. When you copy the maintenance program, 
to uh, let's say maintenance one and we hit enter do you want a copy yeah we do and right now when we will change the attributes to copy source as you can see our maintenance program is saying that it was copied from the maintenance all right the next one is detail so that's showing the program details and we'll talk about those in a moment when we go to a program creation because you got a, when you create a program you got to uh, choose all of those okie dokie uh, next one is a uh, load so we can load a teach pendant program uh, we don't have anything plugged into the USB right now I will show you in a moment how that works next one is save us uh, so that will allow us to save uh, our program to a directory that we can choose. So uh, let's say we, we have a directory in here. Let's create one. If you don't know what I'm doing right now, guys, uh, you got to watch my uh, backup video. I'm explaining everything over there, how to create a backup folders and so on. Okay. Uh, so uh, when you click save us, we're going to save the file to the directory that I selected uh, before. So when I do do save, just that one program is copied to that uh, file, that, to that directory, I'm sorry. So when we go uh, UD1 to load, we open it and we have the maintenance program saved as a TP file. Awesome. Uh, you can do print, which is even more useful. When you do print, uh, remember that you need to pre-select the destination like I did. So I'm going to, right now to say to print the maintenance one program to the UD one, uh, and we hit enter. It's going to save it as a ls file in the destination. So we go again file UD one load all. See, we have the maintenance one saved as a listening file, which can be edited in, in the Notepad. And we have the maintenance uh, file save as a binary file uh, as a teach pendant program. Okay, uh, awesome. Uh, now let's go back. Oh yeah, we have the load one left. So you can uh, load the teach pendant program. So we can load. But uh, it's saying that already exists and do you want to override yes or no so we can override it and it's loading the the program out of the pre-selected directory so guys what whatever you select in the file he will try to load from here whenever you push the load button i hope that's clear uh, so let's get to cre to the to creating uh, our first program okie dokie so we're going to hit the create button and the first thing you gotta do is you gotta give uh, the program a name. Uh, let's name it first program. First program one. Okay. I hit enter and you're inside the program. Now let's go back because I want to show you a few options. So also when you hit create and you will create, you will give it a name. Sorry, wrong button, guys. One more time. I'm a little bit too used to the keyboards. Okay. Uh, instead of hitting enter right now, uh, you can hit detail. And it's going to take you to the program details that you can edit. When you hit end, you and you are going back to the program. In case you uh, don't change the program details before you do anything in the program, or actually also, also after, uh, you can always go to the detail and in here you can uh, change whatever uh, you want. So let's uh, select our program tool that I created. Let's go detail. And right now, what can we change in the detail? The first thing we can change is the program name. So if you want to change the program name, you're going to hit enter and you're going to change the program name to whatever uh, you want. Hit enter. It's changing the program name. Second thing is subtype. So in here, you're going to select what type of program do you want to create. Now there are quite a few options. Uh, first is none. None means uh, by default a teach pendant program with a TP extension. And in the teach pendant program, uh, you can 
pretty much put and do everything. There are no limits, of course, except for the curl uh, uh, logic that can be used only in the curl programs. But ex uh, besides that, you can use you can put uh, motions in there. So the points you can put uh, I/O, you can put registers, you can do logic, you can do many many things with it. The next one. And that's the one we're going to create today. The next one is a collection. Collection is not really a program. You can think of it as a folder that you're going to put uh, programs in. So it's like just to keep uh, everything more organized in a robot. Personally, I've never used it, but I will talk about, on, about it on the next lesson. Uh, next one is a macro. Macros are uh, specific programs. They can have motions as well, but usually they are designed to do not have motions in because then you're allowed to do much more with them. You can assign the macros uh, to a button. So whenever you push that button, something can happen. Like let's say gripping can open or close. Uh, you can assign it also to, to this button. You can assign it to the operators button that are on the robot controller. Uh, and other things. Again, we're going to talk about those in the next video. And we have also the condition handlers. So those are the program that uh, uh, you can create and they will kind of monitor what's going on with the robot. And uh, they work as a interruptions. So in the condition handler, you're going to say, uh, if something happens, then run the condition handler, basically. And again, that's for the next video. So we want to select none for now. And right now we go down and what you can do, you can put your command in here. So we have our first program, which is first program free. But maybe you want to add uh, some specific uh, comments to it. So you can name it as future robotics. Uh, first program. So everybody knows uh, like what that program is, who created maybe, and what is it for. It's useful guys because program name uh, can be only uh, can have only 16 letters so you can use the comments to give it, give it a little bit more details. Group mask. What is a group mask guys? Uh, group mask basically saying how many motion groups are used in the program. So you can choose between asterisk or one. If all is asterisk, that means there are no motion groups. So robot will not move in that program. And usually those are used for macros. We want to execute some move, uh, moves. So we're going to leave it uh, as one in here. If you have, for example, a servo gun that's configured as a second group, you want to put one in here as well. I cannot do it because I have only one uh, motion group installed. Right protect. What is the right protect, guys? Uh, whenever it's off, uh, nobody can. Uh, everybody can ch make changes. If you change it to on, nobody can make changes to the program. So let me show you. We leave the right protect on. We're going to end. So we have our first program free. Enter. Let's say one other point. We'll go to that in a moment. And we says we'll, we're going to get the message memory protect violation, which means that program is right protected. Uh, it's an easy way to uh, stop people from changing your programs because nobody, uh, not, not nobody, but not many people know that that's uh, so easy to change and uh, it gives you some kind of protection. So if you don't want anybody to mess with the programs, change it in here. Ignore pause. Uh, dot will work only with the programs without motions. And so basically a macros that are executing only logic. And when that is on, the program will not stop even if a e-stop is pressed or a hold is received from the PLC. So that means that that program will always run no matter what happens uh, to the robot. Again, there cannot be uh, motions in there. It's only logic. Okie dokie. Uh, stack size, guys, uh, maximum 4,000. Uh, I've never experienced uh, a problem with it. So basically, that's like how many, how much memory you want to allocate in your RAM. 
Uh, if you get stack overflow, that means you need to increase the stack size. So uh, then the program can handle uh, more calculations. For example, again, the maximum value is 4000, but that also probably depends on the robot type. And the last one is the collection. So uh, if you have any collections created, you can uh, assign a program to a collection, but we're going to talk about the collections on the next video. Now there is something I will show you, but I'm not going to talk about. Uh, when you hit next, sometimes the robot has special options that you can enable or, or disable, uh, but that's for later. Okay, so when you're done with your settings, you know uh, what you want to have in here. You're going to hit end, and uh, all of the settings for the program are, sa are saved, and we're good to go with editing. So let's hit enter, and we are inside our first program. Okay, now what I, why I said that the frames and payload and mastering was so important. Well, that's because it's a good habit to always write your programs in a correct frame, in a correct uh, tool and with a correct payload. So uh, first thing you wanna do in the program is you wanna select correct tool and correct user frame that you want to move the robot. You do that by, by holding shift chord and selecting the correct tool and correct frame. For us, tool 10, tool 10 is the pointer, user number 3 is the table. When you have that selected, uh, you are able to create your first program. So if you want to just touch up a few points, you're going to hit point, select a point, click on it, and there you go, the first point has been taught. Now you want to jog a robot a little bit. There you go. You want to hit point. Again, you can select, we're going to talk about the motion types uh, soon. Hit enter, we have the second point and let's move somewhere else. and point, enter, we have our three points. So now we can run to the beginning of the program. So you're going to select with the arrows up, you're going to hit shift, hit forward, that's how you execute the program, and the robot will move through our program. Once more, shift forward, and we're executing the motions that we taught. Now, uh, if we want to change an existing point, we're going to just jog up, for example. We want to change our last point. So how we do it, we're going to hold shift and hit the touch up button. And now as you can see, there is an add symbol. Add symbol means that you are at the point or very close to the point. So that's how you know uh, where you are at. You can also execute the program backwards. So you can hold shift and hit backward and the, the robot will go uh, back through the program. Just remember, whenever you go backwards, the logic is not executed. Right now we don't have any logic, we have only motion instructions. Okay, uh, what do we have in here? So when we go to the next page, there are two more buttons. One is insert, and we can insert many instructions that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And you, can, you have the edit command, that allows you to operate through the program, uh, to change the program. So the first button is insert, so you can insert the lines and you can tell how many lines you want to insert. If you're not going to type any number, by default, you're going to insert one line. You hit enter and you're getting one line. So let's insert three lines in the front. Now, uh, the next button that we have is delete. So delete works the same as uh, delete in the menu. So when you want to delete and you say yes, you're going to delete your point. Now in here we have a nice option when you go to edit command, there is a undo. And do you want to undo delete? Yes. So we have our control Z. Guys, that's a lifesaver. It saved me so many times. Remember about it. Uh, what else do we have in edit command? Uh, with the delete, you can select also multiple lines. So you select delete and you can select multiple lines to delete. Okay, 
Next one is copy cut, the same story. You can uh, select and you can select multiple lines to copy. So you can select copy or cut the same like uh, in on a regular laptop. We can copy those points. We can go up and we can paste them. And there are many ways how to paste it. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. Okay, the next one is uh, find. So you can find stuff in a program. Uh, so when, you, when we're going to add uh, instructions, you can find those instructions in the program, in the program is very, lo very long. Uh, renumber is basically if those points were not in order, it's going to uh, change the order from one to whatever was the last point. Comment is turning on the comments. Now you don't see it because we need uh, inputs and outputs. Undo we've talked about. Uh, remark is a use useful option. So whenever you will remark, that's a remark line. That means robot will not execute that line, but you keep it in a memory. So if you want to test something, you can remark the stuff that you don't want. Check if it works, if it doesn't, well, if it make, make, made it wrong, you can go again, remark, under remark, and you're back on track. Okay? Uh, icon editor, uh, that's a way of changing the robot to a different view. So that's the icon editor. Personally, I don't use it. I don't like it. It's uh, commonly used probably with the new robots, but uh, I'm using the regular editor. Uh, and then you can turn uh, IO status. We don't have any IOs in here, so you won't see it and change the color. The color basically, if you have like uh, comments or uh, IOs, it's going to show in a different color. Okay. Before we move forward, I want to show you something uh, because we save those points with our uh, tool and user frame. So a very good habit, guys, always when you create the program at the beginning, you need to define that. So we're going to add our first instruction and our first instruction, we're going to uh, add uh, frames. So what we want to do is uh, we want to set a user frame, uh, an active user frame, oops, excuse me, that's wrong, uh, wrong selection. We want to input the uh, user frame for our program and the payload uh, for our program. So uh, let's go with it. So you want to go to payload. And you want to define that we want to use payload number uh, one, because that's the one that we taught, for example. So the first thing you're going to say to the program, hey, you will move with that tool assigned uh, to the robot. When you're using that program, you're going to use the tool that was defined in payload number one. Next thing you want to do uh, is you want to uh, add the uh, select a user frame. So the user frame that we're using is number uh, three. And you want to insert your tool frame as well. And we're using uh, tool frame number 10. So that will help you uh, with always selecting the correct frame and collect uh, tool for the movement. So when you execute it, we don't have any problems. We're getting overload because the payload one is not defined. Now, uh, I want to show you why, because if you will select a wrong user frame and you will try to run the program, it will say that you have invalid user frame selected. But when you run through the first lines, so if you would not have those defined and you want to run it with those user frames, you're not able to. But as soon as you define them and run shift forward, do you want to start from a different line? Yes, we do. The robot is overwriting whatever you had selected with those and you're able to run your whole program. Okay, guys, that was a very simple program, uh, but you know how to move the robot right now. You know how to create your first program. You know how to add the points and that's the, that's the big start for us. Uh, so in the next video, 
I'm going to show a little bit about the instructions. I'm going to describe, as you can see, there's many. So there is a lot to talk about. And uh, the thing I said before, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the other types of the programs, about the collections, about the macro and the condition handlers. Okay, guys, that's all for the from the exercises today. Thank you. Okay, guys, and that's all for today. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. And guys, see you in the second part. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.